What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. Previously, Java had a release cycle where a new version would come out every two or three years. However, this did not work at all. So they switched to a new six month release cycle. The quantity of developments introduced is still the same, but these developments are spread across multiple releases. So there are now two different types of releases. Feature releases, which are only supported by Oracle until the next release pops up, i.e. for six months, and long-term support releases, aka LTS releases, which will be supported by Oracle for a very long period of time. As you can see, in the table I took right from oracle.com, the releases that are still supported until today are 7, 8, 11, and 17. And version 7 is about to stop being supported in a few months. Now because of that, what I am going to do in this video is go over, in my opinion, the most useful slash important new features that have been introduced between Java 8 and Java 11, and between Java 11 and the most recent Java 17. Let's start with the features introduced by Java 11, or basically 9, 10, and 11. Okay, I'll start with the new methods added to the string class. These methods are the is blank, lines, strip, strip leading, strip trailing, and repeat. As you can see, in the example usages and the outputs in front of you, it is pretty straightforward what each method is meant to do. Next are a few changes around collections. First, the list, map, and set each got a new static method called copy of. This method returns an unmodifiable copy version of the given collection. So, if we try to add an item to this unmodifiable list, then the action performed will throw an unsupported operation exception. Similarly, the stream API got a new method, the toUnmodifiableList method. Any attempt to modify such a collection would result in an unsupported operation exception at runtime. Additionally, we now have the ability to transform a collection to an array by making use of the toArray method as you can see in this example. Now back to streams. With this Java version, two main additional methods can be noticed. A static not method was added to the predicate interface. We can use it to negate an existing predicate. And the optional dot else throw method, which doesn't take any argument and throws a no such element exception if no value is present. By the way, we detail everything you need to know about streams in the video linked in the card above. A couple other small but useful changes introduced by this version are the ability to manage a resource without a new variable being declared with a try with resources statement if the resource is referenced by a final or effectively final variable. And the ability to add private methods to interfaces which can be used to split lengthy default methods. Now, concerning the NIO package, which we also discussed in a previous video, two main methods were added to it, the write string and read string methods, as you can see in the example in front of you. Finally, the last thing I want to mention in this first section is the new HTTP client call, which now uses the builder pattern and is easier than ever to create, define, and use. Okay, I know and you know that with every version a lot of performance improvements are added, modules, modifications, and way more than what we just mentioned. However, here I am trying to focus on developer changes, while trying to keep the video as concise as possible. So let's go ahead now and lay out the features introduced by Java 17, or more precisely, by all the versions from 12 until we reach 17. I am going to start with two methods added to the string class, the first one being indent. It adjusts the indentation of each line based on the integer parameter. If the parameter is greater than zero, new spaces will be inserted at the beginning of each line. On the other hand, if the parameter is less than zero, it removes the spaces from the beginning of each line. The second new method is transform. It accepts a single argument function as a parameter that will be applied to the string. In this example, we are using the transform method to apply the string builder's delete method on our string. Next, we have a new functionality introduced to the collectors class in the streams API, and it is the teeing method. This one accepts two downstream collectors. Each element in the stream is processed by both downstreams, then both their results are passed to the merge function and transformed into the final result. In the example you see, we used the teeing method to add the minimum number in our integer list to the maximum. 
Another method added to the stream API is the toList method. So instead of making use of the collect collectors dot to list method, we can now directly type in to list and be done with it. Okay, next is something I personally enjoy the most, and it is text blocks. Before tackling it, let's take a look at the problem and assume that you need to make use of some JSON string in your code and you need to print it. Well, it is going to look similarly to what you can see. However, text blocks will definitely make this code more readable. They are defined with three double quotes where the ending three double quotes may not be at the same line as the string ones. The output is, of course, identical. Additionally, you can indent all the text by moving the ending three double quotes. Notice this green line to the left, it determines the start of your text. So the more you move it to the left, the more your text is indented to the right. Okay, the next big change introduced is switch expressions. Now, I'm not going to dive in its details in this video as I already explained it and went through everything about it in one of our very first videos on the channel and it is linked down below in the description if you would like to check it out. Another change I was very excited about is the ability to initialize variables and use them while making use of instance of, or in other terms, pattern matching for instance of. Previously, to make use of instance of, we had to write code similar to the one you see in front of you. With pattern matching for instance of, the above can be rewritten as follows, and it is now possible to create the variable in the instance of check and the extra line for creating a new variable and casting the object is not necessary anymore. It is important to take a closer look at the scope of the variable. It should not be ambiguous. In the code below, the condition after AND will only be evaluated when the instance of check results to true. So this is allowed. Changing the AND into OR will not compile. The next change introduced is a helpful one, null pointer exceptions. They will save you some valuable analyzing time. With Java 11, the output will show you the line number where the null pointer exception occurs, but you do not know which chained method resolves to null. You have to find out yourself by means of debugging. With Java 17, the same code results in the following output, which shows exactly where the null pointer exception occurred. Okay, now that the enhancements and adjustments are out of the way, let's talk about the two big changes introduced by Java 17, and let's start with records. Records will allow you to create immutable data classes. So before records were introduced, say you wanted to create a POJO employee class. You had two options. Either auto-generate the constructor, getters, hash code, equals, and two string methods using your IDE, or use Lombok annotations. However, in both cases, you'll end up with some boilerplate code or with a dependency on Lombok in your project. The employee record we created here using this single line has the same functionality of the previous employee class, but it is much less verbose. You create a record, indicate what the fields should be, and you are done. The second and last big change I want to cover are sealed classes. Sealed classes will give you more control on which classes may extend your class. A class in Java 11 is either final or it can be extended. If you wanted to control which classes can extend your superclass, you can put all the classes in the same package and you give the superclass package visibility. So previously, say you had these three classes, person, customer, and employee. Notice how instances can be created for an employee, a customer, and an employee, for example, can be assigned to a person. Besides that, it is also possible to create a manager class, let's say, which extends person. But let's go ahead now and seal our person class by adding the sealed keyword to it and indicate with the permits keyword which classes may extend this sealed class. The subclasses must indicate whether they are final, sealed, or non-sealed. A sealed class must have subclasses. In our case, both the employee and customer class do not have and do not need to have subclasses, so one will be non-sealed and the other final. The super class cannot control whether a subclass may be extended and how it may be extended. So if we go back to our previous example, the manager class is no longer allowed to extend the person class. However, it is allowed to extend the employee class because this subclass is indicated as non-sealed. 
Let us know in the comments down below if you'd like a second video where we dive deeper and give more examples on records and sealed classes. So that's it for this video, I hope it was helpful, thank you guys for watching, take care and I will see you in the next one.